Just a few things that the Lord laid in my heart. Number one is thank you, Mommy Kolade. Please take as much notes as you can. Thank you, Mommy Kolade. You see, in the ministry, there may be many members. There may be many workers. But you don't get many in the type of Mommy Kolade. There are usually not many. There are usually very, very few. And it is always the joy of a pastor to find people like her. Who not only is she always happy and, you know, jovial, she's always alert and on duty. You know, there was a day that I went to the children's church and I saw her, I think, sitting in the sun right in front of the children's church there, you know, welcoming the people. And I was, how can a 70-year-old woman, you know, be sitting in the sun just to welcome people to the children's church? Even those of you that are not 70, if they post you there, you will post yourself away. That's just the truth. I think it was that day, that day that I said they must go and construct a sun shield because I saw her sitting under the sun. Yeah, that's why, you know, for me, people like her are very precious. And when I see her also, when they are getting ready the, the welfare materials, again at 70, Plus. It reminds me of Romans chapter 16, verse 3, that you see on the screen. Apostle Paul said, Please help me to greet Priscilla. Help me to greet Aquila. Because these are my helpers in the ministry. If I'm to write my own, a book of the Bible. I too will say, help me to greet Mommy Kolade. Help me to greet Mommy Balogun. Because these we are my helpers in the ministry. I pray that your own pastor will be able to say that concerning you in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two. Get ready for God now. I didn't say tomorrow. Get ready for God now. The priority you give to God is a priority you get from God. Take as much notes as you can. God does not waste his blessings. That's why he says in John, John chapter 4, James chapter 4, verse 8, draw near unto God, and he will draw near unto you. You know, Jesus Christ said in Mark chapter 8, verse 38, Mark 8, 38, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he come, comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. See, those of you that they are saying, join the workforce and work for God. Be busy for God like Momikola Day was. And you are saying, Pastor, just mind your business. Leave that matter for now. Don't worry. When you two you are praying, the angels will say to God, God, don't mind him, or just leave this matter. Because the priority you give is the priority you, you get. It's very clear in this passage. So those who refuse to represent me, those who refuse to stand for me, those who refuse to bear the badge, the badge, the badge of a worker for God, those who refuse to report for duty. 
those who are not available for me to use, when I to return to take my people home, I'll be ashamed of them. I pray for somebody here today that by reason of attending this service this evening, you will decide to be fervent for God in the mighty name of Jesus. Tomorrow may be too late. Let me ask you a simple question. I don't know if you can save 100% guarantee that you will see tomorrow. If you are very confident that even God can kill you before tomorrow, raise your hand. In other words, if God sends angel of death to you that it's time for you to come or you tell the angel to go back to God and tell him you are not ready. No human being can tell you for sure that they will see tomorrow. None. That human being does not exist. Because we live by grace and we wake up every morning by grace. And because it is by grace, you can't take it for granted. It's a gift. Life is a gift. It's a gift. Therefore, don't postpone it tomorrow. Because tomorrow may not come. I have shared with you several times some stories of people that they were not old. They were not sick. I've shared with you at least one of my own classmates. He was in his 20s. He was very strong. He was the strongest amongst us. He used to play rugby. You know this American soccer where they dress up like King Kong. The rest of us will be looking at him. This man is strong. At 26 or something. He slept and didn't wake up. No sickness, no old age. Strong man. He slept and didn't wake up. I was telling my wife a few weeks ago too that I remember this young man as well where I used to, where I worked. 40 years old. He and his friends went to have lunch. He didn't finish that lunch. He died while they were eating lunch at age 40. Not at the hospital. He, they all went out to go and eat lunch. And he died in the restaurant while they were eating lunch at age 40. Tomorrow may not come. I pray for somebody here. You will make a decision for God today in the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody is too young to serve God and nobody is too old to serve God. The priority that you give to God is the priority you get from God. Number three, I have only five things to share with us tonight. But look for your own word. Because as the Lord liveth, because you are here today, God will at least say one thing that is for you. If you live here today and you cannot say, this was my word, this one was for me, then you didn't come. Then you didn't come. Number three, stay focused on God. Success outside of God we always end in trouble. Let me repeat that. Because some people are very busy outside of God. Pastor, I know all this thing you are saying, I know it's true. I don't dispute it, Pastor. But I really need to work now and really make it. And then when I have made it, Pastor, I'll come back. And I'll come back. I'll come back. When I have finished, I'll come back. You will come back. Don't worry. We'll wait for you. Success outside of God we end up with trouble tomorrow. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Anytime you decide to trade away God 
for something else. When you are supposed to be in church, you decide to go and pursue something else. The money that you are supposed to use for the work of God to grow, to go up, you decide to use for something else. Your talent, the brain that God gave you, you refuse to use it for God. But you are using it outside for work of man. But nobody in the house of God knows anything about the talent that you carry. Keep going. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Proverbs 10, 22. says, the blessings of God make it rich and had it no sorrow to it. If the blessing is from God. But if the blessing is not from God, it will always have excess luggage. It will always carry excess luggage. Because the enemy will not give you something without you paying times two or times three. Let's close this point with the story of our friend. You know the man, right? In Luke chapter 12. How many of you know him? The Bible calls him the rich fool. He was very rich. But he was a... He was a what? He was a fool. So it's possible to be rich and still be a fool. As long as... As far as the Bible is concerned, you can be very rich, very successful, and still be a fool. Because that man was extremely rich and successful. But as far as God was concerned, he was what? He was a fool. Because he was saying to himself, my business is expanding. I am doing well. As far as he was concerned, he was doing very well. He said in the passage, Luke chapter 12, he said, I don't even have space again to put all my my materials, this warehouse is too small. Let me put down this warehouse and build a bigger one. Because business is booming. Remember the point. Success outside of God today is trouble tomorrow. He kept on acquiring, like many of us are busy now. Many of us are very close to that man in terms of behavior. In terms of behavior, you wake up in the morning, you rush to go and make money, you come back at night, you have no time for anything that can remind you of God, no time to study the Bible, no time. You are running up and down, money at night, looking for money like this man. He got all the money. All. He became very rich. Because God sometimes can really play, can catch us in our own way. You know, God could have made the business not to prosper. That way the man will say, ah, I'm trying, I'm not succeeding. Maybe I should just go to church and join them to be doing praise and worship since business is not booming. But in his own case, God let him succeed. God let him succeed. What, you want money? Keep getting, keep getting, keep getting, keep getting. He kept on getting. And then at the end, God said, all that you have acquired, you will not spend. Because you forgot who gave you the life in the first instance. And verse 21, let's put it on the screen as I move to point number four. Luke 12, 21. So is he that lay a treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. The man was rich towards himself. Extremely successful to himself. But as far as God was concerned, as far as the work of God was concerned, as far as the vineyard of God was concerned, he was not rich towards God. God says the way this man ended is the way everybody will end that is not rich towards God. Mommy Kolade was rich towards God. I don't know how much money she had, but everybody can testify that she was always on duty for God. So the richest person in Nigeria or anywhere in Africa, all over the world, that is not rich towards God is actually poor compared to mommy. 
That's in the sight of God, though. I'm not saying in the sight of man. In the sight of God, all the billionaires and millionaires and all of that that are not rich towards God, as far as God is concerned, they are poor and have nothing to compare to what Mommy Colade had. I pray for every one of you. May you be rich towards God in Jesus' name. I say, may you be rich towards God in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, second to the last. You die once. After that judgment, no plan B. Let me repeat that. You die once. After that judgment, no, no plan B. Compared to other aspects of your lives, if you lose money, is there plan B? Yes. This business doesn't work. You can try another business. Even they go to your account and remove all the money there. For as long as there is life, you can still replace it. You can still make money. So there is plan B for wealth. What about your health? Uh, sickness comes. Our doctors can give you plan B. Even now, people who have AIDS can live for on, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. 50 years more. They have AIDS. But the doctors have been able to create plan B. That in spite of the sickness, they will still live well. So there's plan B for wealth. There's plan B for health. Even there's plan B for education. If you apply to uni like they don't take you. You can apply to somewhere else, right? There's plan B for education. There's plan B for church. If you don't like life gates, I don't know other churches around. If pastor preaches a sermon you don't like, say, Pastor, I don't like that sermon. In fact, I'm not coming here again. Is there not plan B? There's another church you can go to. There's plan B for church. There's plan B for pastor. If pastor gets too proud, you just go to another church. There's plan B for almost everything except life. Except life. The moment it is gone, there is no plan B. For Mommy Colade, no plan B. And that's why I'm saying we need to rejoice. Because our plan A was the right plan. I pray for every one of you. You will live your life in a way that you will not need a plan B in the mighty name of Jesus. And then finally, as I close, prepare daily to appear before God. You may not get a second chance. For those who are members of LifeGate, they know I say this a few times. A few times. And one of my own regular prayers, one of my own regular prayers, regular prayers, when I wake up in the morning, Father, help me to be ready for you every day. If today is my last day, help me to come up to come home in glory. I've been praying now for how many years. I don't know how long I will live, but at least I pray it every day. That if today is my last, Father, let me come home in glory. Let me be ready for you every day. If you have that mindset, you will not be afraid of death. And if you have that mindset, your life will have meaning. If you have that mindset, your life will have focus. And death will not catch you by surprise. Whole eyes closed. You are here this evening. If Jesus is to come today, you are not sure that you will make it to heaven with him. You are not sure that if today you were to die, 
you are not sure whether you make it to heaven. And you are saying, Pastor, I need Jesus. I have not lived my life well enough. But today I want to make a change. Pray for me. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Please lift up that hand wherever you are. Tomorrow may be too late. Just lift up that hand if you are here. Say, Pastor, please pray for me. Pray with me. Just lift up, lift up that hand very well so I can see you if you are here. I need Jesus, Pastor. I'm not sure that I will make heaven if God, if Jesus were to return today. Just lift up those hands if you are here. Or you are already born again. You are already born again. You know that the life you have lived is not the life that is pleasing unto God. All eyes closed. Thank you, Jesus. All eyes closed. If you are that person, just lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. That whatever it is you may have done wrong in the past, by reason of today's sermon, you have decided to live your life properly going forward. Just lift those hands unto him. Just lift those hands unto God if you are here. Say, Pastor, pray with me. Pray for me. I want to change my lifestyle. If you are there, lift up the hand before I close the sermon. There is a reason why you came to hear this sermon today. I will count one, two, three. And then my job is done. Say, Pastor, pray. Pray for me. I want to rededicate my life. Please lift up those hands. Lift it up very well. I want to rededicate my life. One. Two. Tomorrow may be too late. Three. Let's rise on our feet, every one of us. And let's sing that song together. Father, I surrender everything unto you. I have heard your word. Please don't let me waste your word in my life. Help me, Father, to be wise. Help me to also live a life like Mommy Kola they lived. That I too will finish well and finish strong in the Lord. Father, have mercy on me in any way that I have strayed away from your will. Cry to him. Father and our Lord, we thank you for the strength and the power in your word. Thank you, Lord, for the joy that we have concerning mommy. And everything you have spoken unto us today, Father, help us to hold them there in our hearts. That our life will not be, will not be to waste. But rather that we will live it in a way that will be rich towards you. That on the last day, we will reign with you in your kingdom. And so shall it be. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.